as you get out Meetings called to order the Board of Commissioners of Everything in Canada. It's 505. You would all rise with your own invitation to get into a proposition of the letter. If you remain standing for the pledge of the Please bow your head. Dear Lord, thank you for everyone gathered here this evening. Please be with us as we try to handle the business and affairs of the county, but we do as uh, you intend the boards to do. Please be with everyone as the weather moves through this evening and uh, tomorrow morning. And please be with our world leaders. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda for tonight. Did you issue a new agenda for all of these? Did you have one item we're going to insert after old business, or uh, because they were filed for the they asked you to allow us to interview the attendant uh, in position? We we'll need to take this agenda and add to it uh, item number five in old business. Is that correct? We're going to add it as new business number one. And everything else. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the agenda. So adding uh, call number one, would you call number again? You can even just add it as um one eight. interview as a free um okay. we just want to add that interview at the beginning of the business. Prior to number one. Prior to number one. Do you have a motion for that? I have a motion that we add to the existing agenda uh, an entry for the county administrator position prior to new business number one. I second. Motion from Mr. Jones, second from Mr. Forrest. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Okay. Consideration to approve the minutes of the May 16, 2017 Labor Commission's meeting. I've read those minutes that appear to be an accurate representation. Do we have any corrections or additions to those minutes? I have a motion to approve is read. Second. Motion from Mr. Lutler. Second motion to Lutler. To approve the minutes as read. All the time, say aye. Aye. All opposed? And that carries. So as we move into the uh, Agenda items. Uh, remind the public, uh, if you'd like to make comments, we always want to hear your input. Appreciate everyone being here tonight. If you can limit your comments to two or three minutes, that helps anyone who would like to speak to tonight as well as be able to speak to it. Also, remind you that um, all the items and documents for the agenda are in the clerk's office and are available on the website. Anytime you want to see those, we have an opportunity to review those items as well. With that, we're going to go into our consent agenda. There are okay. we're going to go into our consent agenda. Is that it? I'm probably talking too loud. So I'll read these items and then we'll take a motion on all the items as consent agenda. Number one, a consideration to approve to renew the cooperative agreement with Georgia Forestry Commission. Number two, consideration to approve to remove the MOU with Georgia Forestry Commission for antenna receiver space on the planning tower located uh, at the trans transfer site on Courthouse Road. Item three of the consent agenda, consideration to approve to remove the MOU with the Appalachian County Board of Education for the use of seven school buses for evacuation purposes. Item four of the consent agenda, consideration to approve to renew the fire protection service agreement with the city of Newington. Item five, consideration to approve to renew the MOU with the Georgia Department of Public Safety for antenna receiver space in the Columbia Tower located at the transfer site on Courthouse Road. Item number six of the consent agenda, consideration to approve to renew the agreement between the Newington County Board of Commissioners an alcohol monitoring system incorporated in the mix for the use and monitoring of SCRAM scram secure continuous remote alcohol monitoring devices. 
Second. 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 Second.
starts, and as soon as the right of way uh, and Mr. Horace property begins in this area. So the county just built that road there and they built all the houses in there on it or what? I mean, it's not considered a subdivision at all. I mean, it, it, it's a subdivision, um, whether or not it was a, considered a major subdivision at the time it was recorded that I don't know. So if you, if you okay this one, then any subdivision in the county, you could, you could do the same thing in any subdivision in the county. If it, if it meets the, the minimum maintenance. Yeah, that's the way it stands now. You can have a rule business now. But you get away from the rule business also if it's in a subdivision. The way our ordinance is currently written regarding rural businesses, it doesn't not allow rural businesses in a subdivision if it's AR1, AR2, and minimum of three acres. Or so would you mind reiterating just real briefly some of the things we talked about the last time that what size buildings could be built on a plot without a business and so forth? Could you just go through that for the um, With the rural business, it's limited to a thousand square feet, whether it be a new structure to be built or inside an existing structure. And that 1,000 feet also includes um, inside area and the outside area reserved. It's used for the rural business. For the business. Uh, the building, if it's in front of an existing home, it has to be at least 100 feet from the property line. Uh, uh, as far as car repair, the limits of no more than two vehicles being worked on at any one time. Hours of operation on Monday through Saturday, uh, daylight hours only. Right. And what's the, what's the rule if someone wants to build a supplemental building on their property of acreage size? Um, they no, would just not, not for rural business use, but just want to build a shop. They would just need to apply for a building permit. Um, a setbacks for an accessory building are 10 foot from a side property line and 5 foot from a rear property line. The rural business, however, is um, a little more strict. Yes, sir. Now, how large could that building be? Um, there's no, no limit. And, and, and if it's outside of a rural business. And I'll say this to share this with you too. This town, the concerns that you have. What I want to make sure the public understands is that they can go build a much larger building with less setbacks. If you didn't do a business, then these actually can build as a rural business. By the gentleman coming in and requesting his business license, we'll have some oversight, which you know, probably people in the county, unfortunately, do not go through the legal processes and just do a shop and do a business and create all that havoc for the neighbors and the community and the county. From what I hear the administrative staff saying, the reason they're recommending is it meets a more restrictive setback. It's a smaller size used for business and it's regulated. And all those things seem to be better for the county to know about it and regulate it than to build a larger building that's not regulated that might be used for many other things. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So I just wanted to offer that, but not to say that the board will vote, but there's, we're often very cautious about restricting the use of people's property. You can only have one fellow that's not living in that building, in that house, to work in there also. That's right. It's very strict. Very strict. Very strict. Mm -hmm. I had one to say something against that, and I didn't hear the time. Go ahead. Can I do that again? You can go ahead and look at the normal comment. Go ahead. You can come to the mic. Francis Morgan and I just want to kind of go over that um, we were approved by the planning zoning board originally not not to have this building we understood that we needed to go in front of the commissioners after that which is what we're doing 95% of the neighborhood signed a petition not wanting this garage which we we turned in um, it's a small neighborhood people enjoy living there the kids ride bikes and play basketball on the one paved road that's coming in. The uh, wildlife roam through the yards and through the streets and we get up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, you always see a deer out there. It's quite peaceful. The property on which the rural business is proposed has got to have the frontage on the public road. And I don't understand the process that I heard that just because there was some grass there that he would have the frontage because that grass there 
is not his. His that, just like a, you know, that has been shaken. He does find a public record, so he does need that qualifications. Has been paid I don't know. Term. That's what I didn't understand though. Is is how that his his land comes like there's two trees here, mm -hmm. and his land comes in the middle of the two trees. So there's half of a tree is not on his land to the front of each one of them. And then it goes back down his, his side of his house, which none of that is on the front. Now the grass for the county is on the front. So are you saying then that because that grass is frontage, his land is front? I, I just didn't understand that. Yeah. Lee, would you, would you, if, you, if you're not verified the frontage is frontage, yeah, I mean, I'm down flat, and the property adjoins the public road. Um, if there was another survey done that showed differently, that'd be one thing. But what I'm looking at, we bought his property based on this flat that, that shows his corners, and then there's the coal separate. Right back. So as, as we look at it, just so the public know, we're looking at the block of the current ordinances and resolutions and things that get in place to control these types of function so they, they do not become an issue or hazard for the neighborhood. Well I just pulled it up on your on your Effingham County system and it shows me that it doesn't it shows the line where the road what his property is and it doesn't show any road frontage. So I was confused about that and I, I do know that you come out there and look so that's why I was asking how you measure something. Yeah you really can't base anything off that tax map that you're referring to doesn't establish any boundaries. Uh, properties can be all, all surveys, and that's what I looked at was the surveys, and that's, that's how I came up with my opinion. If you just look at that, or if you didn't tax map, this is not, not accurate. So, uh, so if an can tax maps are not accurate? It's, well, it's not a survey of a property, but they're showing parcels that, that, you're, and that you're taxed on, but it's not the exact boundary lines. We, we don't, as a real estate board, you don't convey property based off the tax map. I understand. So, so you said it does have public road access. So that, that, that objection would be off the table based on the opinion received. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if I may say the property that Robert Morgan, okay. yes, his driveway is at the county where the culvert is. There's a large drain pipe, and then it goes into a drain in in the grass. Then comes across between driveway and the easement. There's drainage across there and into the ditch. So the county property is actually probably 10 feet to his property line on one side and then 10 feet the other side. So his property doesn't touch the road, period. So. I just want to make sure you understand that we, we cannot stop him leaving from the building to the building out there. You do understand Well, that. I understand that part. What we're saying is, is the license sets a precedence for other people to do the same thing in the neighborhood every time somebody sells. So what we end up with is a half residential, half business area. So if you approve it, you've set a precedence for other people to buy the property out there to do the same thing. There's no way you can say no to them. So that's what we're saying. A business is one thing. Him building the building is another. We have no problem with the building. We have a problem with it being a business. We have a problem with the oil, the oil that's going to be in it and, and where it's going to go and what it's going to do to the atmosphere and, and how it affects us. And my husband has COPD. I want to make sure that there's nothing there that can be hazardous to him. So there's, there's a lot of health reasons, too, that I'm concerned about it. I mean, I, I, if the, re, the thing I looked at online is wrong, then it's wrong. I recommend that Effingham County get it right. But, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Um, and, and another thing is this report on the rural businesses says that 
they can't a building there can't be out of scale or character with an agriculture or residential area. I don't understand how that could be in scale with a ag agriculture or residential area. So that's all I got. Thank you. I'd like I'd like somebody to tell me the difference on the county maintained road and a road in a subdivision. I mean, I, I don't think that is the same thing, even though we maintain roads and subdivisions, but we don't maintain them like, we don't scrape them and, and do like we do on a county maintained road, like Steelwell Road. And in the ordinance, that's what it says on the county maintained road. And I don't think this is considered as a county maintained road. It's, it all depends on how you look at it. I think there's a difference in a subdivision road and a county maintained road in that damn county. And I might be wrong, but I think there is a difference. The, the ordinance for the rural businesses, the language in there um, says it has frontage on a public road. Um, it doesn't state anything about county maintained or not. It's, the verbiage is public road. Well, I haven't looked at that, but it. So anyway, you can build, you can build anybody that's got three acres in a subdivision that can, they can build a building like this in there and have a rural business. They can apply it to. Unless there's covenants, you know, other well, yeah. yeah. But anyway, all right. The one thing is not related to this necessarily, I talked to RC about looking at the size of the second building that can be built on a piece of property in relation to the house. We need to go back. Well, it's you not, it's you not know, a mess. You know, a rural business, you can build it as big as your house. There's, there's no restrictions on that. It's just a rural business. It's about a house right now, right? What's, what's restriction on a, a three acre track of land? And, Building. There, there are none other than setbacks. I also want to make sure they're still and there probably should be some. There, there are no land coverage, impervious land coverage, not, not in our okay. okay. So that, that's something I brought up from this hearing that we had the last time that we need to look at. I'm as much concerned about when I've done a 10,000 square foot building on that, there would be an option there. So we need to look at our ordinance and resolutions on that, do that. to make that more strict. In, in, your, in your ordinance, it says, Public road? Yes, sir. I don't think mine says that. I think my county maintains the road. Could you bring it up on that computer? I didn't bring mine with me. You have a copy of the RC? Thank you. 
Consideration to approve the second reading of an application by Tracy A. Carr for a little business use for a home repair shop located at 341 Forest Road, at 367 Parcel 61 in the 3rd District. I make a motion to approve the second reading. Second. Motion Mr. Rose, second by Mr. Floyd. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And the carries. I appreciate those who are in attendance. We will watch it. We will definitely do the real business application. We'll try to be these other two up real quickly. So we'll try to interview. I need to make a story way even longer. I remember approving your business consideration to approve the second reading to amend section 5.1.2, conditional use, section 5.9.1, permitted use, and section 5.10.1, permitted use of Effingham County Zoning Ordinance to allow for an event concert facility as a conditional use in AR1 and a permitted use in B2 and B3. Mr. Chairman, on the uh, May 16th meeting, y'all you know, approved the first reading of this, these ordinances with an amendment that uh, the permitted uses in the B2 and B3 be changed to conditional uses. Uh, those changes have been made to the documents. Uh, everything further is the same. So to make sure I understand, it, it's conditional use AR1, and it's going to be a conditional use or a permitted use in B1. 
be two and B3. It'll be conditional use in B2 and B3. So, okay. Because it says permitted use on here, so it's all conditional uses. Correct. So not they will all be coming before you uh, at the board for approval. I think that was an intent of what the board had next time. Any discussion regarding this? Do you have a motion? I make a motion for your approval. Motion, Mr. Boyd. Second, Mr. DeLoach. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Any kids? Do we want to require clarification that it's conditional use on all and not that needs to be corrected on the agenda? I know that needs to be corrected. Did you make that note, Ms. Stephanie? That it's conditional use on AR1, B2, and B3? Yes, I will. Okay. That was a motion and a second. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Uh, surplus property at number four, consideration to declare four parcels containing approximately 325.17 acres of land, commonly known as Atlas Sand. Atlas Sand is surplus and accepted, except still bids for about sale. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this was tabled uh, on May 9th, on May the 2nd, to allow time to have some discussions with EPD about actually uh, getting out of the, the mining permit that we're in. Those conversations have occurred, and you know, on May 19th, we received a memo uh, through Mr. Cowan from Matthew Snow um, regarding what will be required to actually uh, complete the reclamation of that site. And there are four items there. Uh, I don't believe these are extremely onerous things that we can do. Uh, I would suggest that you all may want to complete the reclamation of the site prior to actually surplus the property so things will open up to a whole lot more bidders. Um, so with that said, y'all can do what you want to. The next item, or the first item in new business will be the uh, surplus of these plant site buildings so that we can get rid of those. And then the uh, stockpiles can be removed internally or externally, however y'all want to do that. Uh, and that's pretty much all that's on this list. So I think it can be done in fairly short order. And if we were actually to have the site reclaimed, then there will be no more permit, no, no conditions, all those will come out of the sale. So the recommendation of staff is that we can reclamation ourselves before we put it out the bid? Well, that we complete the reclamation however you all would like to do that. Whether we do that ourselves or bid it, that's up to you all. Well, but uh, but yes, this, that we, this is just a surplus of property. Th this is just a surplus of property. Or you can surplus it. We've done it three times now, I think. This will be the fourth. So I, I, we keep resurplusing it because we haven't sold it. Um, I, I defer to the attorney, but I guess you could actually surplus it tonight, complete the reclamation, and then advertise it for bid not to come back. You know, there's just be a time period in between them. Just because we're surplusing doesn't mean we have to immediately put it out there. Right? That's correct. And then we've got two alternatives, and then we've got two alternatives. One that we can surplus it, and you're building it. Well, we're not going to bid it until we do the reclamation. But that's one of the alternatives is to do it. Uh, declare the property a surplus and accept still bids for its disposition and condition that the mining permit be assumed okay, by the So that's what I was going to clarify. That he's going to number two, alternative two preferably, but we do the reclamation ourselves. And yes. And, and I guess I've got to complete the reclamation, then declare property surplus. It's probably better to go ahead and declare it surplus, complete the reclamation. Then advertise it for saying, I think we'll be the proper way we're looking for. Yeah. So, do you have a mission to, to clear the uh, surplus and then do that mission ourselves? Right. I recommend that my motion is for the alternative to. Second. Mr. Ford, do you have a motion? Mr. Lutz, a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And here is. Right, we're going to pause here with uh, the new business and pause the agenda items and introduce uh, the board of those who are in attendance, Mr. Bill Sawyer. We've traveled 200 miles to be with us tonight. Mr. Sawyer, I've come up and uh, as everyone knows, we are looking for an interim manager uh, initially for the county commission operations. and. Uh, one of our candidates, and if you want to just begin, maybe about 
introduce yourself to uh, the board and tell us a little bit about yourself and anything that you would like for us to know. You've got your resume, but anything additional you'd like to show us about you, uh, Mr. Bill Sawyer. Thank you uh, for having me, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner. Uh, I uh, have done this a long time. Uh, this is about uh, uh, the time for me to retire. Uh, ACCG called me and asked me if uh, I would be interested in coming uh, three months, six months, nine months, or a year over here. Uh, it's a wonderful county. I, uh, I've gone through here a lot. Uh, I, my wife asked me this morning where I was going, and she said, good, it's close to the beach. I'm uh, married, uh, have four children. Uh, I have a daughter that teaches at engineering school at Columbia University in New York. Uh, I'll let you have your own opinion about that. I have a son who works for the Department of Defense uh, who's visiting my daughter in New York today. I have another daughter who just got out of college uh, last week and I have an 18 year old who wants me to buy her a Cadillac as soon as she gets through college. Uh, I have uh, been the county manager in six counties uh, from here to Texas. I had uh, 200 plus employees at the largest one uh, 25 or 30 million dollar budget uh, have never been personally sued or indicted uh, by anybody have uh, been a party to several lawsuits with counties um, but have not uh, have not it's pretty good for me uh, have not had any issues my health is good I exercise every day I lift weights uh, it doesn't look like it but I need to I'm in my 60s I've been in uh, have uh, college from University of Georgia, ABAC, and Georgia Southwestern, uh, a, little, a few hours from University of North Carolina when I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the Marine Corps for uh, about uh, six years, did a couple of tours in Vietnam. I was in the infantry. Uh, I uh, was wounded. Uh, I was no better than anybody else to have gone, but it paid for me a college education and uh, I certainly support our veterans and what they've done. I uh, drove 200 miles because I am interested in, in your interim job. My personality and, and my management style are uh, fairly cut and dried. I'm very fair, uh, but uh, I expect things done. I, I, I look for efficiency in government. I look uh, for the taxpayer to get their money's worth. And I look for integrity and honesty. Uh, those things are easy to come by. Uh, I've never been fired from a job. Uh, I've not always had my agreements or disagreements with commissioners, but I've tried to be honest and I've, I've tried to put in uh, a good day's work. I'm usually the first person in and the last person to leave. Uh, I don't, in, in 31 years, I don't think I've ever asked for a raise. I have uh, a great uh, love for county government. I think that this state is one of the best run states that uh, we have seen all across this nation. If you look at our tax rate, our governmental leaders, both parties, Republicans and Democrats in this state, we've done a good job. Our roads, our infrastructure are better than most. And I hope that in the counties I've been in, we've done the same thing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to answer any questions. But you got to speak up because it's hard to hear in here. I have a soft voice. Anyone on the board like to ask a particular question? Uh, I'll just inject my mind looking over your information. You've got a lot of experience here. I'm not sure county that you're at now. What's the Sly. Sly County. Sly. you got Platt County, Macon County Board of Commissioners, Governor uh, Authority. What, what, what was one of your best? Uh, positions that you held in mind. What did you do? You, you know, I've never had a job I didn't like. Uh, we had problems in Pike County. Uh, they had a fire chief that uh, had some issues and they were charging, uh, no offense to the one sitting by me, uh, there. We were charging fire fees that were exorbitant. And the commissioners uh, uh, were all about to get defeated because of it. It was a real simple process. You just simply go in, you find a way to fix it, and you eliminate them. They all got reelected again, by the way. That was a, a, a lot of fun. I rebuilt the courthouse in Pike County. 
rebuilt the courthouse in Macon County, rebuilt the courthouse in Sly County. Uh, the best job, they're all about the same. The hardest job was Macon County. It was a, a job that uh, had uh, a lot of these issues, uh, old timey issues that uh, took a lot of work, but five or six years down the line, we, we, we fixed them all. But I've enjoyed them all. Never had a commission I didn't like. Uh, and and uh, I hope we keep it that way. What particular uh, experiences or skills do you believe you can bring to the table of perhaps other candidates? I, I, I have had the great ability to, to look at a ballot sheet and tell you what was wrong. I know you're a CPA. Uh, I just was have been really lucky uh, when when we see uh, expenditures that are probably wrong. Uh, I, I've been able to look at that. I, I don't recall in all the years that I've done this raising the millage rate. I've, I've gone into counties that have raised it just before I got there. I, I think we've lowered in the three and a half years I've been in Sly County, we've lowered the millage rate fractionally, but every year. Uh, I, I think my skills are communicating. I communicate with all the commissioners. I don't treat the chairman any different than uh, Ms. Jones or anybody else. I treat you all alike. I think that bodes well for us. I treat the, the, the employees, that, that's your greatest asset, your employees. I treat them with fairness and respect. They just do their job and they won't have any issues with me. Um, I, I, I think probably managerial skills, Marine Corps teaches you a little bit of managerial skills. You adhere to those and be truthful. Those are good traits to have. You're still presently at Sly County? I am, and hopefully this month we'll wrap that up. Okay, that's what I was wondering about. What is your availability, what is your availability date as far as that goes? Two weeks. It's a plan you're talking that you're making. What's the reason for leaving Slot County? You just want a different challenge, or you want to do some interim work, or I, I think I'd rather do interim work up to a year in, in each county. That I I, uh, I got a call from two counties this year, uh, and and uh, I want to do what's going to benefit my family. Uh, I only went to Slot County. Uh, this is the second time I've been in Slot County. Uh, I'll stay there four months one time, and then did some work for the governor. Uh, this time, my interim was supposed to be interim, and it's been three and a half years. Um, that's a long interim. You must like to ask I, 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 I hope they do like me, and I like them. They're good people. It's time to leave. Have you now helped them find, have you helped them find a replacement, or what's the status on that? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I don't know that I've ever been asked that before in a meeting. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, th that county was, Six and a half million dollars in debt with the USDA water bond had had not made any payments in eight years was on the verge of a catastrophe. It took two and a half years to uh, repair that. Um, I, 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 I have bankers on that board. I have a retired Air Force colonel. They're all smart. But they have jobs, and, and you have to have somebody that, that really was dedicated to fix that. We fixed that about uh, October of last year. Uh, one of the highlights of my career was fixing that and paying that note off. Uh, I'm sure they would ask me, uh, but I don't know that I would be the good judge of what they need now. Uh, I, I, I'm. Uh, not trying to be evasive, I just don't know what they need now. I'm a little bit driven, and and uh, it's hard to replace that sometimes. What was the budget that you dealt with there? What was the budget there in Sly County? The Sly County is 10, 12 million dollars, and Pike County with enterprise funds 28 plus, Macon County 15. Uh, I think the largest one is probably 28 plus with enterprise funds. Thank you. Thank you.
three uh, directors did you have outside the constitutional officers? What kind of departments did you have? It's not the local departments, not the public works. Did you have, you have rec departments, you have water departments, you have you have public works, uh, you you have 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 water, not sewer. Uh, about to, uh, to move toward gas, uh, and and constitutional officers have the normal. Uh, we just one of the things that we did uh, year year and a half ago, and several counties have done too. Is uh, we felt like we needed to merge our magistrate and probate together. Uh, we did that, uh, and it's so far has been uh, uh, a proper thing to do for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you made it went through the legislature, uh, unanimous uh, from the, the entire board. The legislature said that they wouldn't do it uh, without unanimity uh, from the board. Uh, we went through that and went through talking to the current magistrate, the current probate, um, and. Uh, it, it worked out really well. Uh, I think there are nine different divisions where I am. I think in Pike County there were 17, 19, something like that. What kind of salary are you looking for? you have a salary requirement? Uh, when, when Dave calls us, Commissioner, he basically says that they're in the $100,000 range. Would you be interested in talking to them? I said, yes, sir. That was nothing else. You have a salary What do you make? Can you have a nice house for you? Uh, about that. Would you be moving here? If, would you be moving here to receive the position? Uh, for for three months to a year, I will I will live here during the week. Uh, if there's no uh, emergencies, tornado, hurricanes coming, no train derailment, I'll go home on the weekends. If it is, I'll stay. Uh, I, I've learned that. Uh, uh, you, you have a response requirement, and I try to meet that response requirement. Uh, what I really need, or usually need, is a vehicle, a cell phone, and an office. I, I can do pretty much the rest of it. In addition to the uh, hundred thousand dollars compensation, would you be looking for a housing package as well? No, sir. That would include your housing package. Yes, sir. I can get, find my own place to live. Don't need the taxpayer to do that for me. Would you be looking for any per diem for travel back and forth to where you're currently living? No, sir. No, sir. Just give me a county vehicle during the week. Uh, but, but me going back and forth, no, sir. No, no per diem. You'd be willing to make 40 hours every week? I, mean, I never make 40 hours. I'm always over 40 hours. So you don't have no problem working five days a week? So I don't know that I've ever not worked five days a week. I heard you say he's the first to arrive in the last three days of the day. <laughs> I, I think you, you can ask him. Uh, please ask him. You, you'll see it's uh, not a lot of fun. I've heard that the city manager of uh, Springfield lives late and leaves earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, this is a pretty town, and I'm going to let him speak for himself. <laughs> Or her, whoever. <laughs> Were you looking to be like a contract employee or would you want to be a county employee? Do you need health benefits and things like that? I, I, the VA takes care of me. Uh, I, I think you and the attorney can, can do it. I'd rather be an at will employee but a county employee. I, I think from a legal point of view, if there are some things you need to do, it's best to be a county employee. Contract employee doesn't have a lot of weight legally, in my opinion. I don't want to practice law, but I'll let the attorney say that. Um, but I'm probably right. Negotiate. I mean, talk about. Any other questions? Between his resume and then just what he spoke at the beginning, he covered a lot. Yeah. She said between the resume and what you spoke at the very beginning, he covered a lot to get us a good picture of who Mr. Sawyer is. That's good. How about uh, expectations of us? Do you have any expectations of the board should be off your position? Uh, I usually require that, that you take my phone call. I go out of my way to call you uh, once or twice a week. I really would rather you call me back. I have an issue. I wouldn't just waste your time. I, I'd like for you to tell uh, any problem department head that you might have if you have those people. Uh, prepare yourself before I get here. If I'm the one that you choose. 
Uh, I do not try to practice law, uh, but I try to uh, uh, protect you and the taxpayer. Uh, I don't ask for anything that's uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, I try my best to communicate really good with you. Uh, just communicate back with me. Uh, do I expect anything? Honesty, integrity, and communication. Very good. How about any questions for us? Uh, more for the attorney, if you don't mind. Any lawsuits or judgments against the county that the county has now? Yes. Major, uh, no, you can't talk about it. It's not an executive session. But more than one? Do you mean like currently remaining or ever in the history? Like, are you talking about like right this Right this very moment. There's not a lot remaining. I will say, I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer one question for you in that when a few of us took office, there were several large ones, but they've all been taken care of for the most part. I think we have pretty much one remaining um, out of those, but they are from historical problems years past. Got it. That's the only question I have, Commissioner. Mr. Chair. Okay, very good. Any questions? We appreciate you spending this time with us tonight. If you would. Get Miss Stephanie's email from her. Um, I'll, I'll give her your I'll, I'll give her my card. Okay. And that's and good enough. You can uh, give us your transportation and Washington will be able to take care of that. Thank you all for having me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're ready to proceed with the rest of the business. <coughs> that was great. for the use of an inmate work crew to perform work on public works projects. The agreement expires on June 30th, 2017. Georgia DOT reimburses the county approximately 91% of the cost of the correctional officer and the county contributes the remaining 9%. The county has received a new agreement from Georgia DOT which runs for fiscal year 18 and can be terminated by either party for convenience with 60 days written notice as the agreement has been reviewed and approved by the county attorney, and um, funding can be accommodated in the approved budget, staff recommends alternative one. Any questions? Motion. Motion. I have motion to approve all number one. Great. Motion, Mr. Wager, second, Mr. Deloach, to approve all number one. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Cares. Thank you. Number three, consideration to approve an executive, excuse me, and execute a capacity agreement with the state of Georgia Department of Corrections. The board currently has an intergovernmental capacity agreement in place with the Georgia Department of Corrections, stipulating how many state inmates the county is able to accept and how much compensation the county will receive for housing them. The agreement expires on <coughs> June 30th, 2017. 
The county has received a new agreement from the Department of Corrections, which runs from July 1st, 2017 until June 30th, 2018. The new agreement allows for the county prison to house 192 state inmates, for which the county will receive $20 per day. The Department of Corrections has sole, cus sole authority of transfers of inmates to and from the county prison. The agreement has been reviewed and approved by the county attorney. The staff recommends alternative one. Any questions? Do we get paid for all 192 or just the inmates we have in there? Only the ones that we have in there. Are we committed to holding those open for them? I believe we are. I, I, that was committed to holding them up on the trial. No, was a big the, reason for jail or whatever else. You know, they have the right to hold 192. Yes, we got to hold them position open. But I think it stays fairly well at 192. I mean, it fluctuates. Okay. Nearly daily, but I think we're, yeah. we're pretty much at one. I need to. Oh, we're doing 170, I think. We're doing 192, it'll be the state for the fault. Okay. Any other questions? Any motion for alternative one? I'll make a motion to approve the alternative one. Second. Motion is to keep the second, Mr. Lefter. All in favor, the alternative one say aye. Aye. All those in favor? Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go to uh, time for a new business consideration to approve the first reading of the budget and approve the budget ordinance for fiscal year 2017 2018. Uh, I believe you're sure now. Yes, sir. Um, just to call your attention in your packet this evening is a copy of the budget ordinance. The uh, budget ordinance governs us um, as far as how we operate. Um, generally, in addition to this, is attached a copy of the final budget um, that you approved. With that said, we'll go ahead and start going through the budget. We have done this um, this past meeting, so some of this will just be going through that information again. Of course, as far as the budget and operational considerations, we always try to make sure that we come in with a balanced budget, that we review our service delivery agreements, and making sure that we're in compliance with those, um, that we uh, use as much software and technology to increase efficiencies. Um, we also try to make sure that we improve our service levels um, and use all uh, existing revenues um, to replace assets as needed. Um, in addition, um, we try to put um, an adequate amount in contingency funds. Uh, the goals, um, as always, with this board is to present a balanced budget if possible and to promote partnerships and meet um, the quality of service to our citizens. Uh, our budget challenges, as always, are our property tax digest levels, increases in prices of items that we purchase, um, continuing to rebuild our aging fleet and infrastructure, and then balancing those needs against the growing population. Um, the original budget that we presented uh, several weeks ago was at $29,361,892 um, with revenues of $29,361,000 at that time we were going to have to use fund balance to balance that budget of $161,000. Um, at the last meeting we were asked to come up with an alternative budget um, so as far as the fundamental facts, um, some of these have changed um, in going through those. We did try to keep as much capital that was proposed in the budget. Um, we did um, reduce some of those capital items only because of the fact that we are trying to do some of that in the current year. Um, and so as far as personnel at that time, we did not have a cold or merit in there. The alternative budget that we see in a few minutes um, does include a colon and merit. Um, we did have to add 15 new positions um, and um, we're trying to sort out how we could um, do as much of the capital needs as possible. 
those departments that we added, there was one in magistrate, a deputy, six in the sheriff, one in the prison, one in the jail, two for the recreation project, and four in the EMS. The current millage is at 8.337. If we used a full anticipated rollback rate, it would be at 8.296. Um, again, this is a personal overview and the cost of those. As far as those additional employees, at that time it came to 894,876. Uh, the capital request were anything from vehicles for a magistrate um, to current payments that we have going on, uh, along with some additional um, equipment for our EMS. This was just an overview of our general fund by category. 64% um, of course of personnel. Our purchases make up about 19%. And this was just to give you as board members um, a review of the expenditure trends by service. Um, and then as far as a view as public safety, it was about 12 million of our budget. General government is about four. Judicial is 3.2, health and welfare is 5.9, development is 1.7, and then other is about a million. And this is a historical view for y'all's review as far as our general fund, budget, and actual revenue and expenditure. Uh, the general fund revenue, we of course have um, several different categories, functional revenues. Um, property tax lost, um, and then of course fund balance if we need to use it. In this particular case, we were expecting fund um, functional revenues at 6.9 million, uh, property tax um, in its totality at 16 million 116, loss of 5.9, and other revenues at 590,000. This is a graphical view just for the property tax revenue projections. Um, our projected loss revenues, as you can see, still not necessarily trending up. Um, we have done extensive review of those loss revenues. Um, and primarily, it seems that on the utility side, uh, those have not risen as they once were. Our historical millage rate, of course, um, back in 2006, we were at 9.9. .9. Uh, we have continually reduced those millage rates now at 8.3 to 7. Regarding our special funds, those of course are our enterprise funds, where items are of revenue and expenditures are specifically designated. Um, and then our SPOS projects, those are project link budgeting, also in our special funds. Inspections and zones, we did have to put an increase in staffing levels for additional staff in that area as it's beginning to pick up. Our special tax district at the last meeting noted revenues from our insurance tax proceeds, our franchise and then lieu of tax, um, and then transfers to our senior citizens, fire, mortar, and sewer. Our fire countywide. Um, basically showed a little over $3 million. Um, one point on this, we have not finalized everything as far as um, the fire budgets with the cities. We're still working on sanitation um, has remained about the same uh, at 3.3, 3.1 .3, .3. <coughs> We were asked for alternatives as far as uh, getting our budget in balance and perhaps placing a COLA merit raise into this particular budget. On those pages, what you'll see is our original budget and then proposed changes. We went back and reviewed several items. Um, namely, we reviewed our gas, if you recall, this last year, about a year and a half ago, we went with the state program with the WETS, the 
which I believe has helped us significantly, along with the reduction in just overall gas pricing. Um, in addition to that, we did um, do pool cars instead, along with um, a more gas efficient car that we were purchasing. And so in reviewing those, you'll see that we made adjustments in Department 8 for gas of 1,000, adjustment in magistrate we believe that particular vehicle will be um, able to be um, used from the sheriff's department so that we will not have to purchase that um, tax assessor we reduced their gas contingency uh, we put that back to our normal um, of 125,000 um, medical we reduced that medical we had hedged a little bit of the medical for the first time put a contingency in there on the medical. Uh, again, Department 15 on gas. Department 16, we reduced those groceries when we went back and looked at that, um, and we're doing very well in that area. In addition to that, we reviewed the prison as far as other equipment and found that there was other ways to handle some of those items. Uh, EMS, we were able to reduce a few items in there. Um, and it had to add a couple of things. Um, recreation, we were able to reduce their budget as far as just gas expense. Uh, we did do a three year history on this and reviewed current versus those three years and took the high of the three years. Um, recreation, other equipment, um, there was two mowers in there. Those mowers were about 11,000 a piece. We believe we have sufficient money in another line item to cover that if those are necessary. Um, in addition, we looked at Department 17, which is the Sheriff's Department, spoke with him today. Um, we did the same thing in his and reviewed a three-year history, leaving the high for the gas. Um, and now that was 83,000 of this. Um, roads, extension. We also looked at GIS as far as aerial photography. As you remember, we spoke on um, in some of the prior budget meetings about doing the aerial photography on the 272. Uh, if that is uh, the case, then we would not need this 20,000 uh, within the department uh, 225. Because that means it'd be paid for out of the enterprise, but we're not tax free. So um, there were several uh, other items, miscellaneous items that we included in there. Um, as far as the cold and merit, we were asked to figure a 3% cold and merit that comes to $372,000. We were also asked to look at any positions that weren't currently filled um, and reduce those. Um, that came to $117,000. Um, in some of our discussions, we did add back some money for turf management um, within that line for that individual. Um, and so that overall net came to two seventy-four. dollars um, And so with four forty-one dollars in reductions, um, and 274 personnel added back, um, we come to a budget of $29,200,126. Um, and looking at that, if you look at the very next page, you'll see the overview of that. Um, and that basically puts us at um, no, not using any fund balance whatsoever. Um, actually, um, according to these figures, about 332 to the good. Leaving our functional revenues, our property tax loss, and other revenues at the same amount. This also, um, as far as this alternate budget, will affect uh, our special funds, of course. Um, and you'll see a page um, showing as far as the fire alternate budget. We did <coughs> go back and look at the fire budget to see if there was any reductions there. We did the same thing on gas and looked at that, um, and were able to reduce um, the gas and fire budget um, so that fire budget now stands at three million one thirteen. Um, we looked at the sanitation budget. Um, that budget stands at the three million one thirty five uh, five oh five. And then the last major piece that that affects is our special tax district. And if you will recall the special tax district was at a four forty one um, as far as the fund balance, it is now showing um, at a 417.
Let me ask you this. Yes. The 417 negative on the special tax district. We, that's saying that after the water and sewer operations and so forth, we're only predicting to use $417,000 of special tax district fund balance. No, actually, that would mean that we would be putting that back in. Uh, if you look at the total, the 100,000 um, transfer to senior citizens, transfer to fire, a million seven, uh, transfer to water, 61, and transfer to the sewer, 105, that totals 3 million, 39. If we add the 2 million and the 1.4 together, that is the net yeah, difference. Positive Sir? That's a positive. That's correct. That's an increase in the special tax. So will we send our water and sewer is closer to a break even now? Most certainly. With, with, with the funding of insurance premium. Well, insurance fees and but not only that, but because of the fact that our cost recovery fees have substantially gone up in the last year are over a million dollars um, between water and sewer. We still have yes. that. We are, we are, mm -hmm. yes. You might have to be start using these insurance premiums to fund things like power and not water and sewer. That's a positive. That's good. Very positive. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, I don't think that you're going to I just wanted to at least pause to give y'all a chance to ask whatever questions on the alternative. Well, I was going to make a couple of statements about um, the alternative as far as I guess you could have goes to staff for, for really trying to tighten things up and, and um, the benefits that have been found in gas with the wet by staff and then even to the level where the Sheriff's Office in, is going to be able to help the MAG court because the type of vehicles required to take predators down <laughs> um, is not exactly the same as, as um, what the MAG court needs. So uh, all the different concessions and things like that that everybody's been willing to work together to try to make it um, work and then especially without having to use anything. Um, the fund balance I think so is a plus. So. Also, we tried to contact as many people as we could today, um, especially the sheriff, uh, tax assessor, uh, fire, and a few of the others that we were able to get called into. Everyone was very, very cooperative. Um, Jimmy was, was very much so. Um, and so um, it was only with those efforts uh, that we were able to get this done. You took a look at Joanna, worked with him on looking at his gas budget and verifying what his highest gas had ever been and still factoring in where he's going to be getting new employees with new cars and still and still leaving a cushion to cover that um he made a reduction in his gas budget that enabled us to balance this without using fund balance <coughs> and gas prices have gone down so that helps us as well and i don't think we um compliment staff sometimes um and fiona is here tonight um fiona worked very hard um financing and, and purchasing to get the wax in um, and to get the more fuel efficient cars. Um, and I think that shows in, in what we're doing. And also on the capital side, I'm glad to know that uh, some of the improvements we'll be making will be adding a bit of 24 hour unit payments for EMS. Correct. Um, I was out there, unfortunately, on the EMS day, it was bad weather that afternoon, kind of got short, but I saw the, the new stretchers that they will be using. Uh, that would be a lot better for everyone and also glad we were able to um, work with the sheriff on some of the employees because some of those who were adding will actually be on patrol uh, the amount of calls they are running that would be a huge help to the sheriff well and, and uh, let me say purchasing costs um, a lot of the departments right now we've gone back and reviewed our current budgets and then one of the items that we were able to reduce for EMS was we're going ahead and getting those tough hooks. Um, we were able to find money within the current budget that's when I'm working with Chris um, to go ahead and do some of those things um, in our current budget. Um, and so your staff is working to get that done. Any remarks? Just as far as the other points of consideration, of course, um, I think we do need to make mention that the Gateway did ask 
uh, for that funding. Um, we still um, are working on the issue with the library. I believe we're we'll much closer at this point with some of the adjustments that we were able to do and work with them. Um, and so um, we feel, um, or at least I do, I feel like we'll be able to manage that uh, at this point. Um, and then um, as far as you know, the hospital for the first time, you know, um, we've had a full year where we're getting in um, uh, those payments from that knowledge, um, that's helped significantly. Um, and so um, at this point, you know, we believe it's sad that we well, I also say further, it can be done. I'll say further since I've taken office as when we took office in a really bad economy, it has finally started to rebound. And we have hoped by this point that we can see the uh, the a bigger benefit in our property tax value from the growth that we're having. Hopefully, we're going to see that by next year, but um, the fact that we're getting a surge in the services is a big plus, and then we'll think we'll take some of our expenses and move them over to those services. Um, it's going to help. So we do appreciate everything staff has done to get us to this point. It has not been an easy road any of these years. Um, we've not had the benefit of <coughs> increasing tax, um, property tax digest value. So we appreciate the hard work. We appreciate that increase in the digest issue about seven million. And, and that helps our current um, tax payments and a little bit increase. Uh, and you know our, we know our values are rebounding, so we appreciate the assessors doing that and doing that for us. That helps. Helps. It really helps. We're not doing it for you, we're doing our job. So. Yeah. Correct. Oh, yeah. But it's but if you don't do your job, I just say what should not be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then the services continue to go up as the population grows and we think about the services. Well, and kind of the point is as we get new growth, there's a tax cut in there. So that should benefit the existing taxpayers. Um, that's kind of the point is we know we're growing now. So hopefully we're going to start really seeing that. I would like to say you have updated sheets, summary sheets with your packets. <coughs> um, and if this board is Includes of the changes that we made, we will, of course, regenerate an entire package. So, we get a discussion questions for a call for motion. Uh, do I have a motion for alternative two, which is to approve the budget resolution and option two, this alternative discuss including funding of a COLA? I'll make a motion that we approve. Alternative two with the additional changes <coughs> that were requested as well as the 3% um, goal. Second. Motion to Ms. Jones, second Mr. Deluxe, is that right? Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed no. And the first reading is approved. Thank you so much for your hard work. Appreciate it. We have an outstanding finance director and finance department. Set out the zoning would uh, come into the city of Rankin. 
And again, y'all, I believe, have a copy of that now. Although you may not have had much of a chance to, to uh, review it. And beyond that, I think there's been discussions you know, between this board and uh, Rankin City Council. So you're all familiar with this. And I see. When? I see the city of Rankin is here present too. So if you have any questions, we might get to get this answer. Did this I just feed off that this has been a cooperative effort with the board and the cities in the last couple of meetings talking about how you work to the property and get that property sold and get seven plus a million dollars out in the Dodge yet. And so that's what's in for this discussion. Any questions, discussion? I have a question for Tulsa. Okay. You're Tulsa, go to the city limits and go in and rank on Fort Howard Road where the old dog leg used to be there. I think it's a great street there. Yes. When did that when did that get annexed all the way to uh, Old Augusta Road. It's not. And that's part of this annexation here. Yes, that's part of this request. From the city limits, just basically beyond Logan Castle, that general area. Uh, this request has four Howard Road out to Old Augusta, a portion of Old Augusta, a thousand feet or so, and the Grandview Track. All right. Then on that intersection there, we, we, we were planning on putting around about there that intersection. Rank gonna put it in that area? Uh, no, sir, Mon. You know we're still moving forward. The plans have been prepared there at the uh, Georgia Department of Transportation. They offered to do a cursory review for us, and at that point we can move forward with the project. And that's up to you all. We funds. We, if we, if, if Frank and Annex, we don't want to build it. The county's not. As far as I'm concerned, we're going to build it. If Frank wants to the annex, they'll have to build it. As far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. Yes, yeah, your staff's prepared the plans. It's up to you all. What y'all do with those? You know, once they're prepared. At this time, I want to ask a question. Toss, um, did the county receive some state funding to help with that roundabout? We received funding. Uh, we had a list of a little over $2 million worth of projects that was in there. Okay. And so we did receive state funding. It was uh, a month money from a rebalance of FY16 budget. And we do intend to use a portion of that money for it. Now, it was not designated specifically for that intersection. Again, we had over $2 million worth improvements that we could have chosen to do it on, but that is where the board chose to use the lion's share of the money. And I, I will say that in our workshop, we, in the land we talked about the possibility we can annex in this property in the ground about that time, and I understood the consensus of the board at that time was it was a safety issue, and we want to go through the whole and you know, see that ground about the bill, regardless of the annexation. I mean, we could we give them money that we got from, we got for it, but I don't think why we should do it. It's if it's there. they want to annex it, then they ought to take they ought to take the roundabout and build the roundabout. Well, I, I think that might be a different discussion than just the annexation. It's a legitimate question, discussion to have. But I, I wasn't in there with me. You know, you were discussing all of this here. anyway. We're not committed to having to do the roundabout at all. So no. we don't have to. Do no, no commitment. Uh, to no, we could do anything that was on that list that was approved by GDOT at that time. Right. We, we are committed to spending money, right. and we need to do that fairly quickly because, you know, we should have already done it. But in long story short, I'll say this just for reminding anybody else, please feel free to follow up. We've talked about this for many years, and Mon has been on this board for years, and months, and in all these quarterly meetings that we've had. And basically, the bottom line is one of the reasons our budget is tight right now. Fund balance is because our fund balance is not liquid because we had to sell a lawsuit um, in which we sell a lawsuit and trade for land. So we, we are the proud owners of that land, and it's actually the citizens that own the land. And we do know this <clears throat> that land is more valuable and, and sellable with what our sewer run to it than without it. And it needs it. And they need to go do it, but we have to do it. And they can do it a lot less expensive. So that it seems like that is the smartest way for all citizens to benefit. And that's the bottom line of it, period, for me. Um, we, we've had that land appraised. It appraises for around $7 million um, with water and sewer being assumed. And so we can get that cash back into the funds for the county citizens if we can get water and sewer run there. So, and, and, they, and I believe they, they're, they're really close in where they run it to. Is it just because they're going to school and that? Um, they're in the area. So that's, that's one of the main benefits for allowing that. And that's, um, that's why I'm a stand in favor. 
one, one thing I want to point out is that the city of Rankin, in good faith, based on the conversations that we've had at workshops, <clears throat> excuse me, the weather, at quarterly meetings, we actually extended our contract to go ahead and get the work to the property line of Grandview without annexation. So um, because we have been working well together, um, you said that you were agreeable to annexation. By the end of July, you will have water and sewer, the capacity, everything that you need at that property by the end of July. Suppose somebody comes along, they want to build a plant or something out of there, and they don't want to be in the city limits for rain. Well, then, I mean, that's, you know what I'm saying. Well, a lot of industries in a lot of places, they don't want to be in the city limits for rain. There's a lot of scenarios you can look either, either way. The bottom line we looked at in the court of meetings is that I think one time I heard twice that <clears throat> three or four years ago, $9 million per square foot of water right. sewer there. They could do it for about half a million or less or a little more. And, and so we know that I believe that before 12 months is over, but that probably would not be a concern of this board any longer. It would be in the hands of some kind of private industry or developer once he has water sewer. And we're going to take property right now, we're going to get a dime of property tax off of it. And so the 7 to 10, 15, 20 million for the development could be 50, 100 million dollars and that would be us all our taxpayers. And that's kind of the things that we've been driving our thought processes in this. Without water and sewer, they won't come. <clears throat> they won't have to. They need to be concerned about whether they're in the city county. But Commissioner Loper, um, speaking of uh, relaying messages of council, um, I know that we hear that, that some people don't want to be in the city. But council's position has been, and that's why we took even more language out of the PUD document that I had sent to TOS earlier to make it even more general, to work with whoever wants to come. So if it's a combination of industrial, commercial, residential, we want to be development friendly. You were just talking about um, how the economy has turned around. So we need to have the attitude that we welcome that type of development so that people will want to come to Rankin and work with them. And what you're saying is one of, the, one of the things you guys have done is in, in creating this was help it be in line with what our policies are yes. so that it kind of takes that argument away. It does. When you read it, it is very general um, because it outlines that um, the PUD would be industrial, commercial, residential, whatever that plan is. We know that with PUD, you have to come back and get the individual um, parcels, um, go through a development review process. So we leave it open, and that's why actually we have developed this PUD slash Grandview is a zoning designation of its own. So the other PUD um, zoning that we have for the city of Rankin won't apply to this. This is a standalone <coughs> PUD zoning designation for Grandview. And Commissioner Loper, that was one of the things that, that's one of the things that... You can change it one year from the time of this index anyway. That was one the city of Rankin, when that acts, they can, they can change the... Uh, designation on it after one year. After you get it one year, you can change it whatever you want to do anyway. He's saying you change it back if you felt like changing it back. But I, I did just want to make mention that that was something that we asked them to do. It was like a requirement. Well, that's fine. Okay. You don't have to learn it for a year anyway. Well, the workshops were very productive to get us to this point. They worked of very well trying to help us. But you know, one of the great, great things about it is if the city grows, we grow because we're going to get property taxes off mm -hmm. that. And one thing I liked about it too is that we don't have to take care of those services. That'll be your police services, mm -hmm. it'll be your, your fire services, it'll be. So we won't increase our costs. You know, nothing gets increasing our fire service. And again, for anyone that has has concerns, um, by you voting tonight, just initiates the annexation process. We still have to have the two readings of the annexation, and we have to go through the um, zoning process to introduce the zoning legislation with a um, public hearing notice, the public hearing, the first and second reading. So if any of you have any questions about the PUD document, any comments, we still have plenty of time to work that out so that you know we all on the same page and agreeable. Good, so you know, take any questions you have and concerns as you read the documents. And it's nothing that's final to the final reading. Mm -hmm. This is just the first first step of a process. First, first step of the yes. Process. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, um, this lies in my district. And I would, what I would want to relay to my constituents is I've approached this as a 100% mm -hmm. business decision, not a political decision. Mm -hmm. if, if it was, I was in a personal you know, position with this property, this is where I would be. Any other questions, discussion? I don't know if financially any of the way.
Well, it's, I, I think it's great to see uh, the cities and county in cooperation doing this type of investment that's going to, I believe, in 10 years we might have 50 to 100 million dollars on our projects. It's really a little bit. Think about one industry. It's most of one of the um, one of the most well talked about properties that we have in the county. So, like you said, people are already talking about it, and now we can say you have one in Silverton. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We did not have this option. Right. We, we intend to market. We intend to make somebody else's issue in six months to a year. Okay. Uh, any other discussion questions? Do you have a motion? I have a motion that we approve and authorize the chairman to sign a petition requesting the annexation of approximately 460, 3.3 acres on this agreement to track. Thank you. Motion to Mr. Jones, second to Mr. Keefer. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. So we have Loach for, Floyd for, Mr. Lipper against. Okay, it carries. Thank you. Thank you, and I hate to leave early, but we have a workshop. I appreciate you taking time to get uh, number six, work order. Consideration to approve work authorization EFL017SA. With Moreland, Alphabet, 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 I'll get it right on that. I'll play instead of Philippine. Associates Incorporated for Consulting Services on I 16 and O'Reilly. Mr. Chairman, we entered into an agreement with Moreland, Alphabet, on June 2007 for this particular project. This is the I 16 on River Road, as you stated. The uh, plans and specifications for that particular project were completed last year. However, due to a lack of funding, this is state funding on our side, but GDOT is close to, or will ultimately fund the construction. That project was left to shelf in May of 2016, which means it was prepared, completely done, and then the plans were just put on the shelf, you know, to wait to await funding. In January of, of this year, the DOT announced that the project received HB 170 funding uh, for that construction. And we agree in to a we, FEM County, agreed to a July 2017 supplemental FFPR on final field plan review submission for an August supplemental final field plan and a March letter. And, and it's scheduled in FY19, which means July of 18 for funding. So we're shooting for a March letter in case some other project slips and there's funding. If not, it will go in July. This is the reason that we chose that particular schedule. Uh, since those plans will have been on the shelf for, for more than a year at the time of letting, they have to be re uh, revised, reviewed for any design requirement changes that have occurred since they were actually finished and shelved and approved. The Georgia Soil and Water Conservation Commission has made changes to the road and sedimentation control design guidelines, which will necessitate changes to the plans to accommodate for that. Uh, additionally, the IDA has constructed an entrance to their property since they were finalized uh, which created a center of current lane and another, and it widened out the, the actual road. So there'll have to be planned changes to accommodate that as well, survey design and so forth. During the uh, development of these plans, there have been several iterations uh, to try to facilitate the project. It, it originally started as a longer project. It was shortened when the key of, uh, vote came in 2011, the 2010 legislation that in, in 11 necessitated that vote. Uh, Mr. Long, who was the planner at the time, wanted to showcase this project and, and have it getting off the ground first. So he asked us to do certain things to try to speed this up and to bring it back in the federal right of way. Uh, those things, of course, were done. And resultant, there were scope changes that, that accommodate that. Some of them to get away from right of way to speed it up, require walls, uh, retaining walls to, to uh, stay within the uh, right of way limits. So a lot of things were done that required scope changes that weren't necessarily documented along the way because it was believed they could be done within the original budget, and they were. However, when we come up now and find ourselves having to do additional work, you know, we're, we, we are looking for some of the additional money. If you look on page four and five, what you'll find is the actual items that Moreland needs to do to accomplish the changes in the design requirements. Uh, caused by the IDA's uh, entrance and the changes that the Georgia Soil and Water Conservation Commission did 
in addition to reholding an FFP offer, which is a, a meeting that's also a whole lot of plans and documents that they have to produce. Uh, and then the post design services, which are reviewing contract requests for information, amendments, EPD revision, shop calls, that sort of thing, comes up just shy of $67,000. If you look on page five, uh, there's a what's titled extras. These are all the extra things that uh, Moreland did to accomplish the design changes along the way that didn't necessarily get codified. Uh, and, and it's been through probably two or three different administrators, a lot of different staff, and there's you know a lot of we as staff probably should have done a better job of codifying too, you know, but we didn't. And so this is a list of all of the things that, that they did in addition to uh, the original contract. And you can see that it totals around $112,000. <clears> They're <throat> looking for 66,000 extra. So uh, the chairman and I had a, had a meeting with uh, Mr. Brinson, Mr. Murphy, and I'm trying to remember, uh, I think Mr. Graham was here too, who all was there. We had a very we discussed a lot of history and how we got here, and I think that we satisfy ourselves that this is a fair and reasonable change order, and with that, staff would recommend that you all approve it. I will say that the more that I really work with us in bringing this cost down, and then we have a considerable amount of extra energy. And part of what I think is DOT, the requirements here and there, and changes, we're going to communicate there in the future when DOT makes these changes. With each other, but I really appreciate them working with us in some ways. Any other question or discussion? I have a motion. Make a motion to approve order number one. Second. Motion on Mr. Loper, second Mr. Keeper. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed no. And carries. Appreciate you. Good work today. Thank you. Mr. Jerry, you are excused. Thank you, sir. Can go home now. <laughs> get some stuff. Look, it's over to get this project on the way. Appreciate it. I'm number seven consideration to uh, approve the deed accepting infrastructure and final five and six and 49 lots for Summer Station subdivision located off of Hodgeville Road. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, BGN Investments is requesting Final plat approval of summer station um, subdivision, which is a 49 lot subdivision located off of Hodgeville Road. Um, the subdivision is on county water, sewer, and reuse. Um, engineering staff has reviewed and inspected the roads, water, sewer, reuse, and storm drainage infrastructure that is to be deeded to the county and have a recommended approval. A, maintenance security bond of $55,718, which is 10% of the estimated value of the infrastructure has been submitted to the county. Staff has reviewed final plat, final plat checklist and the warranty deed, as well as county attorney has reviewed the warranty deed and staff recommends approval. Any discussion or comments? Motion for alternative one. Second. 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 Second use an enterprise license agreement with ESRI for our GIS software. Um, we've renewed each three year interval. Um, this agreement allows for an unlimited amount of software licensing for desktop users as well as um, server uses and um, we use ArcGIS online credits to host our county GIS webpage. Um, Multiple departments use our GIS services, um, tax assessor's office, fire department, EMS, 911, uh, elections, uh, just about every county in the department has some type of layer or use of our GIS software. Um, it's really the most economical way to support the current number of users we have and um, to allow the 
ArcGIS server um, licenses we have, uh, it would be double or triple the value in a one year period for what we pay for the three year period. Um, this is budgeted, um, it's $51,000. It also includes a ARC, unlimited ARC pad licenses which run on our, GI, or our GPS software. Um, staff would recommend approval. It's $51,000? Yes, sir. $153, That's for the full three-year period. We um, oh, okay. this this will come. Down. Yes, sir. Is that an increase over last year? No, sir. Same price. Any other questions or discussions? Have a motion for alternative one to accept. Second. Motion was to say aye. 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 Under nine consideration to approve a memorandum of understanding with Birmingham County Hospital for funding of ambulance service. This relates I think to your kind of going on Who's uh, presenting that one? Tom Blow is on the video. Thomas, is that you? Yes, sir. Joanne? Yes, sir. Um, Basically, um, Toss and I have been meeting with the hospital to gain some additional funding to be able to have additional coverage um, with our ambulances. Um, it's reached a point where we do not have ambulances in-house when we necessarily need them. Um, and so, um, Toss um, had spoken with the um, administration at the hospital. Um, they were to um, providing some funding for that. In further discussions, we were able to get it to 145 as far as the overall funding. Um, this does help to pay for um, the four positions that we had within EMS, um, and that is to extend hours. We basically would be making a part-time truck a full-time truck, <coughs> and then adding some additional hours when necessary in the peak. Times. Um, and we believe this is needed um, and uh, have proposed uh, the staffing within the budget along with uh, the 145 and 11 million against that. And there's some of the uh, contracts here, remember, I understand, it's just 135 actually in the agreement. Yes, that's the original that, that he sent. Um, um, okay. When I discuss it with him a little bit more. I asked, well, what can we go to? Okay. And he said, what What would you like? And I said, can we bump it a little bit? And he said, how much? And I said, can we go to 145, 150? He says, 145. Okay. And this is two contracts. I mean, two new men. I'm not sure what the deal was. So one was the one that was proposed, and 145 is your own. Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. So we're going to this item. This is just some funding to help support. That's correct. It's to go ahead and get you and your own funding to support out with this budget. So, do have a motion? Make a motion to approve all kinds of points. Second. First one, Mr. Gillette. Second, Mr. Lothar. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And it carries. Thank you. 10,000 is 10,000. Absolutely. <coughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I'm now. Part of our budget discussion to our student discussion on fire fee 2017. We're not looking for a vote tonight, we're looking for some discussion, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, we try to usually go ahead and um, adopt these when we do our budget. <clears throat> so um, we discussed at some time um, the need to potentially raise those fire fees. The last discussion was that the board did not want to go into that until we had gotten further with some of the additional. Um, both apparatus and buildings um, so that we can lower the overall cost for the citizens prior to doing it. So, <coughs> with that said, we did know that there was one inequity in that, and that is the way that necessarily those fire fees are built. Um, for instance, if you have a um, residential versus a um, multifamily, if you have two buildings, even though there's apartments within those two buildings, you're only getting charged as 
in structure. So what, what if you had 40 units in one side of the building? What are you get charged right now? Or 25 or whatever? Nine. Nine for the thing. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll just throw it out there. I'm, I'm thinking what we have here is too low. You know, I have rental properties and I pay million dollars for a piece of property, um, $500 for 25 apartments. So, I'm not sure it should be per unit. I just throw that out there. I think, I think the board ought to consider if you have apartments with 10 apartments, it's $900. You have 20 apartments, it's whatever. And I did it for only, if you had 100. Possibly with a cap, depending, because it may get. I don't have a cap. I'm not going to Yeah, but do you have, you know, when it starts to get to a certain rate, it's going to actually cost that much for the fire the apartment complex. They have 500 apartments and it's not capped in some way and they have one fire one apartment. So it might be a level that's not reasonable. Well, you might need to look at the cap as possible, but I would contend that there are even more problems because you're going to lose more than one. Where if you have no houses, you can. I, I definitely agree that we need to be charging per <coughs> to yeah, a cap. Just what cap. it should be. Yeah. Ms. Jones had asked me to try and go back and find out surrounding areas. I just have not had time to do that. Um, and so <clears throat> this is just for discussion tonight. And we will try to get that information. I was thinking it would be good. I would like to understand what are other places doing in regard to that? Mm -hmm. what, what is kind of standard? Yeah, and if you look at it reasonably, you know, if you take an apartment, if it was for $7.50 and charge them $90, they're paying $7.50 on that. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of cost. But you can have a huge fire apartment which you would probably have a residential on residential And that's kind of what we were trying to do as far as setting up just as residential multifamily is five to twenty five. So that technically there is kind of a cap there, depending upon how many you have. But <coughs> at the same point in time, um, we wanted to at least get it before the board, uh, get your thoughts, um, so that staff can research anything that you wish. Um, but at least make these more reasonable as far as uh, some of those buildings. Well, you think, uh, yeah, but an apartment with multi units, if you have more than one kitchen, you know, it's that much more increase of a pre fire. It just makes sense. A little more dangerous, I think, to, to service you get a couple of floors. What's the highest we have in here? Two floors or three floors? What's the highest we have? Uh, we have some three floor residential structures, not many, mm -hmm. uh, mostly two story, one story. So, maybe look, everybody trying to get a unit and look at a cap? Yeah, yeah. We'll look at a cap. We don't, we, we don't want to discourage, we don't want to discourage construction at the same time. That's a lot of firewood, 90 bucks. It's a lot of firewood, 90 bucks. Maybe I like to look at the industrial area as well. I know we went to, managing the city, we went to Fireworks, and uh, I just felt like I don't know what wall I went to, but it's like, you know, that's a commercial for an industrial kind of thing. Like 2,000 or 10,000, they had that high. Four dollars just like a check. And, you know, a fire in that kind of building is going to be huge. And a lot of life, got a lot put in that building, a lot more liability. So I like to look at those two areas if you would. Um, Residential and family and industrial, so you need to help with it as well. The commercial, probably based on the spot, like furniture stores, you know, be a lot more liable to a gas station than a uh, office building. Well, I think you had mentioned that you had a formula that you had kind of come up with. So if we can get, get that, maybe we can share that with everybody and see if there's any. Before you look, you should look at the commercial and fire the base. What you might want to do is set a minimum. Say you got an office or it's very low fire area. It's under 4,000 square feet. You might want to leave it too big. If you get it so you don't hurt the, the business person just as an office. But when you get outside that, that man, you get to your gas station and your stores and when you get a fire away, it's a furniture store. It's going to be huge. It's going to be blazing fire. You can get injured. That may go from $250 around, they go $1,600 for that type of business. It's good. But it's still a good deal of fire. Well, sometimes what we miss is what we think of the cost of the service directly to fires, but they do so much more than fire. They respond to auto accidents. So, you know, when you start really looking at what, what they're responding to and trying to quantify that. Yeah, 
Depends on the type and then the square footage total. Right. That way, you, you don't get the office buildings. People who just pin that two feet on that live. You don't. You don't go up on them. You go up on the ones that are really more risk that need more coverage. funding 
because we opted into the accelerated degree removal program. So it's incentivized more heavily the quickly that you get it out of there. So you'll see uh, under your funding scenario that there's different matches. Uh, whereas we're, we're seven and a half percent in the first 30 days, 10% match in the second 60, and then the, the remainder of that operational period, which is over 180 days, will be a 12 and a half percent match. So that's why it's broken into two different periods. So these two project worksheets cover the first, those first two operational periods. There'll be another one for the last operational period, and there'll be another one for your category C stuff, your roads and infrastructure, that will be on your next agenda. Probably we're still trying to work out some issues with, with the project worksheet on that one. Uh, so that being said, all this work has already been done. We're simply looking for reimbursement now, and they can't reimburse us until you all approve this agreement. Um, these are both uh, large projects. Uh, small projects are defined as projects under 123,100. <coughs> both of these are over that. The difference in the small and large projects is really the closeout process. And a small project, um, they come up and just kind of look at it. Did you meet the scope in a large project? They verify not at all your records. You have to keep records of your payroll, your personnel, your equipment, of all your expenditures, and they'll audit that. We've already collected all of that information. Our EMA folks put it together. Our finance folks reviewed it. We believe it to be complete and proper. It's all been submitted to uh, FEMA at this point. It will still be subject to a closeout process, but we don't see any issues in doing that. Uh, again, in a large pro project, overruns and underruns will be total upon the completion. Overruns, um, you know, you can actually supply or apply for additional funding if it's uh, justified. Underruns go back to the state. We don't get to keep that based on actual expenses as opposed to a small project where they write you a check for it as long as you completed the project. Um, so with that, the, the actual recipient, sub recipient agreements, which have been reviewed by our attorney, and I don't believe in the FEMA to change anything, but you know, I believe he's fine as to form that agreement, and he can answer if I'm incorrect on that. <clears throat> but it requires both the chairman and the EMA director to sign that agreement, so we're asking for permission for both of y'all to do so. Uh, with that, the, the first project, uh, Project 297, which is PW Project Worksheet 3 of the 3, has a local call share of 24,994. And for Project 286, which is PW 333, the local share is 22,389. Again, all of this has already been expended. That would just be deducted from what we get back at this point. And you can see a list of all the different documents that you have to do there. We've read through it. It's a federal grant that doesn't clearly do anything we can comply with. It. So with that, we would ask for approval to allow the chair of the need maker record to sign this agreement. Discussion questions? A motion to approve number one. Make a motion to approve all right number one. So. Motion to Mr. Worthy, second Mr. Gorge. All in favor, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That carries. Item number 14, consideration to approve a land and water conservation fund grant resolution agreement with the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, this is a, excuse me, a follow up on uh, things that you all previously approved. November uh, 2015, the board approved a pre application for four proposed batting numbers of one 225 foot ball field. That's what we apply for in the uh, LWCF grant. It was approved in May of 2017, and we received approval earlier on, but it had to be officially approved by Fish and Wildlife, which is why it's just now coming up in May of 2017. And to actually receive those funds awarded, uh, you've got to adopt and certify a resolution to accept the terms of the grant and sign the agreement, which is the documentation you have here. General provisions of the agreement contain a number of federal regulations that got to be adhered to. Uh, again, there's none that we don't believe we can with. There are quite a few requirements, but we can uh, abide by all of them. And then a permanent record must be kept in a public property records and be made available for public inspection, stating that the recreation facility was developed on land and water conservation fund assistance and cannot be converted to other than public outdoor recreation use without the written approval of the state liaison officer. Now we talked about this when we first talked about the grant. If you accept this money, you agree to keep this land in perpetuity. So, 
just want to make sure everybody understands that. I don't think there's plans to do anything different. But in order to convert it to anything other than that, you would have to have the approval of the state liaison officer of the Department of Natural Resources and the Secretary of the Interior. Uh, comments were received from the State Historic Preservation Office, CHIPO, and the Environmental Protection Division, Water State Protection Branch, which incorporated into the agreement. That's referenced, and you'll see, and we have those agreements again. That's nothing that we can't comply with. Um, so, with that, uh, funding $133,000 will be required as a match. You all have already spent that as part of your budget. It's a $6 million project, so you will you know, clearly have spent the match here for this particular project. And so, um, with that, staff, I ask that you all approve this um, resolution and agreement. Some discussion. I'll make a motion to approve all terms of the Second. Motion, Mr. Keeper. Second, Mr. Deloach. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. And carries. Thank you. All right, number 15, consideration to approve commission of travel for annual chamber leadership retreat to Hill in Augusta. No, to Hill in August at St. Simon's Island. Because it's not just my classes, that can just fall back. It's <laughs> just for you all to discuss among yourselves this year. The retreat is going to be held August 24th and 25th at the King Prince. The actual itinerary has not been put together yet. I've been in conversation with Becky about it and hope to get it out within the next week or so. Yeah, I think it's an excellent event that we did in the community. Well, it's probably taking the report from the other side, and we probably take from this side this time. <laughs> and then we need some folks and see what we can do to work together and, and do better for our family. Any discussion on the travel? We have a motion to approve the travel for the commission to attend the uh, August retreat at St. South Island. Okay, motion to approve. Second. Before the motion, second, Mr. Jones. All in favor say aye. Uh, All opposed no. Next question. <coughs> Consideration to approve to council the July 4, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting. That is obviously a celebration day. This year it actually falls. Our meeting falls on the 4th of July. So do you want to make a motion to council that? Or before we do you want to consider it? Another day, and just going to let that meeting be live. We'll call the meeting if you need one. Depending on our workload, I'm okay with calling them if you need one. Maybe okay. that's some to work with staff. So there's the motion to uh, cancel that meeting. I'll make a motion to cancel the meeting that follows on the 4th of July. So I Motion to Ms. Jones, second Mr. Deloach. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. And it's approved. We will not have a meeting on the 4th of July, 2017. We will celebrate. Twice. Okay. Reports from our staff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have much for you. get your normal annual uh, control monthly report. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. Annual meeting remind y'all that is this Thursday, uh, 6 p.m. at St. Boniface. I know a couple of y'all be out of town, but we do have tickets for that still. We have a couple of tickets. Yeah, so if y'all want to go over, uh, Johnson has some tickets to that event this Thursday. It's up there. Okay. It's up there. It's not in the binder. Appointment of a, a member for that. 
and in the Georgia Fixed Pets and Target Zero. There's two different groups of the Georgia Fixed Pets and Target Zero. They're both organizations that want to come in and help uh, FEM County obtain grant money to fix animals, spay and neuter animals in the community, uh, along with help us with some best practices uh, to shoot for less euthanasia. So they, they want to come in and look at what we're doing and then give us recommendations and feedback of how we can be more efficient at what we do. They will be in town the last week of June. I don't have an exact date, the last week in June. And they'd like to meet with any of you all that would you know, be willing to come out and meet with them. Uh, as long as have like some town hall open forums while they're here. And Ms. Uh, Ms. Lauren just wanted you all to know about that. More details will be coming. Uh, hopefully at your next meeting we'll have that for you. A definitive date when they're going to be here. Date, signs, locations, those sort of things. But just to put it on your radar, they, they are coming in and that's who they are wanting to do. Did Lauren have a particular interest in it that it may be? Yes, she, <clears throat> correct. She has been talking with these okay. two entities. And, and this is, I think, a, a follow-up on what we talked about with raising the adoption fees and getting spay and neuters in the program. We're now offering that as you all approve. And this is a way to help get grants to, you know, to help reduce that burden, uh, the, the, the monetary burden you know, of that, and to help try to get those numbers down where we're euthanizing less animals and adopting more. Any questions for Mr. Allen? About the commission, you think you want to commission about it? Well, they started off with fire department and steel well today. I saw that first load of stuff here, and I was so happy. I've it. Only been a year and a half. <laughs> you want to be able to keep good tabs on that. I'm going to watch them every day. Build a bridge and pour it all in. Yes. Our station is in. Huh? See if we build a bridge in Atlanta in less than 45 days and the fire station is in. But they got it started now. They, they, got, they got some of the steel there that they did to do it. I've seen it. They even had a little pup tent up there for the office that was the lady out there that took the tent with them. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I have. Here we have a meeting for executive session. Do have a motion for all the way up? Yeah, I need to. We were going to update y'all as far as the installation of the lift stations. Um, we have yes. been um, tirelessly going through quotes and trying to vet those quotes. Um, we actually got in additional information midday and then about five. Um, so we, we need to go back and, and look at these one more time. Did those change drastically from what we did? Some of them did, yes, sir. That's what I'm sitting here doing right now. Right. Um, and so I guess the main thing for staff at this point is, is that when y'all approved that 211,000, um, we did so uh, with the acknowledgement that we would be following purchasing policies that we would be working with the chairman and so forth and, and vetting all this. <clears throat> because of the uniqueness of some of these, um, because of their uh, individual needs at each one of these stations, we did do individual quotes. We didn't know how many of these we were going to need to do, nor um, the magnitude at each station and or um, their overall cost. Um, and so I just want to make y'all aware that there is a, a provision within our um, purchasing policy that um, generally we get a sealed bid um, if anything over 20000 But because of the uniqueness of this, um, we really did not think that was viable to do in these <coughs> items. Um, we are working through that process, um, trying to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. We had a meeting this last week <coughs> which involved Chris, myself, Toss, purchasing, um, EOM, uh, and so forth to go through all these pieces. Um, at this point, what we have um, been able to discern, I think, as staff, is that <coughs> there are several different types of platforms. Um, 
we believe that we need to simplify things as much as possible, um, and therefore we're working, looking at one very strongly um, for that because of the ease of use and the ability to uh, replace that software easily um, and to get us back up and going. Um, I don't know if Wesley or Toss wants to chime in, um, but that's the point that we're at. <coughs> The board did not necessarily tell us that we needed to come back and ask for y'all's approval. We just wanted to keep you up to date as to where we necessarily are on this. Um, and <clears throat> Wesley, if he wants to fill in a little bit more. Well, I think you're looking for direction from the board because one of the issues we've got is if they do not start this this month, it's, Correct. Going, to, it's going to put it way back. And yes, the compliance issues, as you know, making sure these things are monitored and we don't have spills and uh, this is this is important in the state system. That's correct. And so if we don't make a decision fairly quickly it's going to push them back the people who put it in won't be available. We wanted to move forward like we have voted to unless there's some well, specific reason brought to our attention. The only thing they're looking for I think is that normally you go to seal beds and I was recommending suggesting that we continue to work with the ones who are negotiating with us for a competitive price because the one that probably is the lowest price has some requirements that you have to use them for updates and grades and reprogramming so it could get more expensive than the other end. So all we're trying to say is we're trying to analyze all that and say our, this may not be the lowest but it's the most competitive responsive. And if the board's good with that, it's still going to be within our budget. Correct. They'd like to move forward without the <coughs> bids. If it's not illegal, because when we very first started, we said we had the deadline, we had the money, we had an emergency circumstance, did it meet everything we believe we were told it did? If that's the case, we're still in that same place. Okay. If it's not the case, then I need to understand that. No, the one thing she said was during that time that she said we've got to comment and maybe I'm just trying to be real clear. You are. Okay. But she she had to comment there originally originally that there were gonna fall purchasing policy which states bid over twenty thousand. She wanted to make sure we know that she's gonna do everything you just said. Well, we may not bid it. So well, and part of it is that some of this process started a year ago. Some of it started with costs. You know, EOM's been involved. And so now, you know, purchasing and finance is involved, and we're trying to make sure we're quoting apples to apples as best we can. Well, the way I understand some of it is it depends on how you price it out. If you price out the individual items, which you can do, this isn't like a, a, a building, and you're trying to pull a trick by bidding it out separately. Um, it's different generators and different things like that, so it can be it can be bid separately. So so it's not it's not a problem, right? I understand. We we don't believe so. Dan and I are good with signing off on it. We don't have any problems with it. We just are taking um, the extra care to vet it. Um, and I thank Wesley for being involved this week and going through some of those issues. Um, and hopefully we'll have this solidified in the next couple of days and able to go ahead and sign off on quotes and move forward. Well, we've had some serious problems for a long time. We need to get a handle and address. We've got the money in this budget to do it, and we need to try to do it. So if no one disagrees with what Ms. Jones is saying, what I've shared, we're going to move forward to the same way. Okay. Very good. Anything else? We need to get that report. I bet you want to give us a follow-up. No, no problem. I just want to make sure the board is aware of what we're moving. As quickly as possible. You are. You need to understand. Or any of our constitutional officers. All right. And now, uh, in motion to go to executive session to discuss personal property and communication. Motion to go to executive session. Second. Motion by Mr. Delores, second by Mr. Floyd. All in favor say that. Aye. 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 He's in the first, I think, to
Mr. Hall, we need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Move for a second, Mr. Keeper. All in. 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 All in